another psalm uh, ready for you. Uh, another opportunity for you to hear scripture and think about its words for you today. Another chance to lift up your own prayers and the prayers of us gathered uh, to, to God today. Let's dive in. Psalm 85 from the Message Version. God, you smiled on your good earth. You brought good times back to Jacob. You lifted the cloud of guilt from your people. You put their sins far out of sight. You took back your sin-provoked threats. You cooled your hot, righteous anger. Help us again, God of our help. Don't hold a grudge against us forever. You're not going to keep this up, are you? Scowling and angry year after year. Why not help us make a fresh start, a resurrection life? Then your people will laugh and sing. Show how much you love us, God. Give us the salvation we need. I can't wait to hear what he'll say. God's about to pronounce his people well, the holy people he loves so much, so they'll never again live like fools. See how close his salvation is to those who fear him? Our country is home base for glory. Love and truth meet in the street, right living, and the whole living embrace and kiss. Truth sprouts green from the ground. Right living pours down from the skies. Oh yes, God gives goodness and beauty. Our land responds with bounty and blessing. Right living strides out before him and clears a path for his passage. So I really like uh, this psalm. Uh, a psalm obviously of lament uh, because it acknowledges that there has been a breaking of relationship. There is an alienation between God and Israel. And yet Every single uh, word of this psalm has so much assurance within it so that it's a lament because it's like, how long? You know, are you going to be angry forever? But there's no real uh, question. There's such a, an, a positive outlook. It's, it's not a long time um, considering when it is literally just well you're not going to be angry forever because you're faithful God and I mean even more significant seeing as the author's not making any bones about whether or not they are guilty of of or, or, or deserving of the alienation that's happened that's straight off the bat like yep you were righteous in your anger we sinned. This, the reason that this has happened is because we've done something wrong. Um, but I know that you're going to be faithful to us. And I don't know, it's in two minds, isn't it? I, I, I can't help having my parent head on. This is weird. I can't help but think there's a, a, a point at which you'd never want your kids to know that, like, you obviously you always want them to know that you'll forgive them but you also want them to know you're not like a soft touch and it's weird isn't it because I think that's the same thing isn't it in in the relationship with God because God is not a soft touch evidently I mean that they they they're understanding that they they need to live right to have this right relationship with God and I don't like to couch that within the phrases of judgment uh, but I, I just think it, it's to do with the way that we live our lives and how that affects how we come to God. How it, I think it affects so so many levels that the knock on effect of living a life that is not right is a broken relationship with God. Uh, so I, I don't tend to couch it in the words of judgment. Uh, yet it, it's a natural sort of result. And that, that's understood, but what's also understood is as soon as there's any desire to come back to God, that God's going to welcome us with open arms. And 
it's such it's such an important reminder for us, isn't it? And if it's not an important reminder for us, then one wonders how we think about ourselves and our need of that grace. Um, so I think we should need it. I definitely feel like I need God's grace. Um, how about you? Did you find this psalm uh, easy? Did you find it annoying to be so self-assured that, that God's just going to come and forgive them? Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this psalm and all the ones that have gone before. Just get in touch if you would like to. Loving God, we thank you that we can have assurance, that we can feel confident in your persistent, unending love for us. In those areas of our lives where we struggle and fail, may we know your peace. And may that peace and that assurity help us to be proactive in looking at ourselves, in looking at the changes that uh, would do well to occur. May that assurance stop us from being despondent about our weaknesses and know that in you there is the power to be radically transformed. Thank you, God, that you have already transformed us and that you continue that work in us all the days of our lives. I pray that we can all submit ourselves afresh today to that transformational process that is being a disciple of Jesus. So, God, may we be like Jesus May we show the world what is important, what the love of God looks like. Amen. Amen.